And now I will ask Kriza to please share your slides. Kriza was mentored by Dr. Shashank Chetty, who is part of the Stanford Medicine Radiology Department. Um, I guess it's he's part of the Interventional Radiology Innovation Group at Stanford. Kriza is a kinesiology major who loves mind games, including chess, Scrabble, etc., and is also a K-drama addict. So I believe you have that in common with Sophia. And Krizza will be presenting, investigate the optimal number of focused ultrasound to increase the release of extracellular vesicles in stem cells. Thank you so much, Marisa. So um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I was assigned by my mentor, Dr. Shashank Shati, to investigate the optimal number of focused ultrasound stimulation to increase the release of extracellular vesicles from stem cells. My internship is in Thacker Lab at Stanford University School of Medicine Radiology. Okay. Imagine waking up every day to a body that has turned against itself, destroying the very cells that is uh, responsible for regulating your blood sugar levels. This is the harsh reality faced by millions of people around the world who suffer from type 1 diabetes, a chronic autoimmune disease that destroys insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. It causes insulin shortage and inability to regulate blood sugar levels with devastating consequences. But what if we could find a way to stimulate the body's natural regenerative capabilities and encourage the pancreas to regenerate the cells it has lost? Dr. Shashank and his team are dedicated researchers um, working to regenerate the pancreas and protect its islets, bringing hope in the fight against type 1 diabetes. Their goal is to promote natural healing and restore pancreatic function, improving the health of diabetic patients. How? Through an exciting new field called Interventional Regenerative Medicine, or IRM. Research has found that diabetic patients still have some functioning beta cells in their pancreas, even years after diagnosis. This discovery has led to the development of promising new therapies, like mesenchymal stem cells, extracellular vesicles-based, or MSC-EV therapies, which can regenerate and protect insulin-producing cells offering a viable cure for type 1 diabetes. Recent studies have shown too that post focus ultrasound or PFAS can stimulate the release of EVs from stem cells. However, it remains unclear what the optimal number of PFAS treatments is needed to promote the maximum release of EVs from these stem cells. Hence, my micro internship goal. I am focused on determining the ideal number of PFOS stimulations required to increase EV release from umbilical cord derived stem cells or UCMSCs. The following are my research methods. First, um, UCMSC culture, harvest and expansion, and then pulse focus ultrasound. Next, microscopic imaging of cell proliferation, and then live and dead cells quantification. EVs isolation, and nanoparticle tracking analysis. The following are the materials that I use along with the uh, methods. So for the first method, I have the microscope UCMSC treated stem cell, uh, cell culture plates and medias with and without serum. I have the cell culture hood here and also the incubator. And then for the second method, I have a pulsed uh, focused ultrasound machine, which uses high intensity ultrasound waves to generate focused energy pulses that can be directed at a specific regions of the plate with stem cells. The ultrasound waves are generated by a transducer and focused through a, a lens, which in here, we use an ultrasound gel to create a tight concentrated beam that can penetrate stem cells, thus stimulating them to release EVs. And here is the picture of me um, stimulating one of the fur plates with different numbers of PFAS. And one plate was used as a control, which is the minus PFAS. And then for the third method, I took images of my plates using Leica fluorescent microscope to document how each MSC is proliferated following the PFAS stimulation. And then for the fourth method, I counted the number of live and dead MSCs for each plate using a three-pan blue stain and countess machine. 
For the fifth method, I isolated EVs from serum-free culture media collected from five MSC plates using exosome isolation kit. I also uh, uses three different uh, centrifuge for this method to precipitate the EVs, meaning bringing them down at the bottom. And then finally, for the sixth method, I use a nanoparticle tracking analysis instrument to quantify the concentration and size of the EVs. And then here are my results. So here, like a fluorescence microscope, images show significant stem cell proliferation with PFAS, indicating increased cell division and multiplication. And then here, I plotted the Countess machine results and confirmed increased stem cell proliferation with PFAS, amounting 481 cells per ml for PFAS 2 and 4 stimulations. And finally, the goal of this micro project, by using NTA, we were able to quantify the concentration and size of UC MSC EVs. So the average, average size of a UC MSC EV is 171.5 nanometer and the optimal number of PFAS is two, which we can see here from the graph, totaling 1.2 billion of EVs were released. So my conclusion is that, my micro study has determined that utilizing two stimulations of pulse focus ultrasound is the optimal approach for stimulating the release of extracellular vesicles from umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells. Next steps are, we will have to study the content of extracellular vesicles or exosomes and then determine the most minimal, invasive, and efficient way of delivering these EVs to pancreas of type 1 diabetes patients. And here are my learnings. So the skills I gained is stem cell handling, cook, um, culture seeding, harvesting expansion, efficient PFAS setup and simulation, MSC EVs isolation, and also asking questions. Major challenges still like uh, which, which I share with everyone is imposter syndrome and also figuring out how to ask the right questions. Major success and accomplishment is that learning the basics of research work, learning to socialize and network and network for personal and professional growth, learning the field of mo molecule biology and working independently. And then for the reflection, I am so grateful for the authentic relationship I built in my internship. Not only did I learn some philosophical advice from my mentor because I asked him his why's, but I also felt belong because Dr. Shashank and his team recognized me, even though I am not yet a degree holder. They are interested in what's on my mind, my long-term goals and skills I want to gain. Through this internship, I witnessed how scientists, PhDs, MDs, and other STEM professionals coming from different walks of life together with with passion and dedication to make something valuable to impact people's lives positively, thus making me like I wanted to be one. And so last but not the least, I would like to thank everyone generally the following. Of course, my mentor, Dr. Shashank and Dr. Avnosh, uh, Dr. Um, Shoba, Joyce and Iris team, Marisa, Sophia, Mil and M Professor uh, Miloni, Tilly Wu, President Fong and Trisha Nguyen, and the NIH for funding the research project, and Foothill College SLI and SLI for scholarship funding, and of course, whole SLI team. Thank you so much.